So I'm Marie, and I'm heading a new program for continuing education of journalists at the City University of New York. And I wanted to start by telling you about my experience with continuing education. So six years ago, I went through a mid-career program at Princeton. Princeton. And it was great. It really helped my career. It made me smarter. It gave me new skills. Uh, and it made me super happy and proud, as you'll see in the next picture. That's me, happy and proud. But it also forced me to uh, quit my job as a journalist, move across the country, and spend a whole year not working. And that's a lot. Who can do this anymore? Who can afford to do this anymore? And that's a really important question, because we know that uh, most of the growth in higher education in the next century will be among the non-traditional students, the older working adults and ethnic minorities. So how do we accommodate them? us really? How do we really embrace uh, education as a lifelong endeavor? How do we design educational programs for working journalists? How do we design for humans? And some really smart people have started thinking about this. The Stanford 2025 project came up with the idea of the open loop university, where you pay your tuition and it's good for a lifetime, and you go in and out of school as needed. So that would replace your two blocks of teaching, the undergraduate and graduate uh, degrees. Um, you would go take a few classes, then start working, then go back to school as your career comes more into focus. And in a way, journalists have started doing this. They have organized themselves around uh, peer groups like, ha like Hacks Hackers, where they learn from one another, when, uh, they learn from one another at their own pace what they want and when they want it. So I guess this begs the question, do we still need school anymore? And yes, we do need school because there's still enormous talent and know-how in schools, but schools need to do a better job at meeting the needs not only of the market, but personal needs uh, as well. And I think we can do this in three ways. We can, one, give people superpowers, two, make learning social so people can find their tribe, and three, make, make it affordable and convenient. So let's talk about superpower. At CUNY, we surveyed some people who hire inside newsrooms, and they told us that uh, they don't hire for uh, reporting and writing anymore. They take that for granted. That, that's the basis. What they hire for is a bunch of other digital skills, the superpowers on top of it. It could be data, it could be social media, it could be coding, it uh, could be video for the web. So now the good, the good news is that you don't need all of them. Uh, you only need one superpower. There's room for everybody on that team. Uh, you don't need to be the Hulk either. You could be that weird uh, bow and arrow guy, if you want. <laughs> He's coming up, that guy. I mean, people will hire you if you're that guy. There's space for everybody. Um, but your superpowers should align with your passion, because your passion is going to be a great motivator for you to learn and succeed. And passion loves company. People love finding a tribe. They love finding a team. And that's another thing that schools don't do very good, is to teach teamwork. I mean, think back to when you were in school. Was there anything more dreaded than a team assignment? That's the face of a contestant on Project Runway who just learned this was a team challenge. <laughs> she hates it. They all hate it, and we hated it too. And that's a shame because in the real world, there are amazing teams like this one. Who wouldn't want to be on the Spotlight team at the Boston Globe? I mean, they have Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> um, I hope you've all seen that movie. It's amazing. Um, and I don't quite remember what my point was for that slide, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's Lois Lane teaching a class, so you make whatever you want with this. So <laughs> something was going on. Oh, um, so... To sum it up, uh, we need to invest in continuing education for journalists. We need to make it better. And I think we do short workshops, uh, skill-based, social, and affordable. And it's important because continuing education is the future. If we do it well and if we make it personal, it could one day, I believe, replace degree programs. Thank you. <laughs>